before you is one of the very senior women leader in this country, Joyce Satino Sogo Ben Suda, Homa Bay woman representative. I want to say that is 043. I come from, actually, I'm an original of Homa Bay County in itself. That means I'm born in Homa Bay and married in Homa Bay and bred in Homa Bay. Professionally, I'm a teacher. I want to say I'm a project planner. I'm also an M and E evaluator, guru in that field. So I'm quite relevant for the position that I'm doing, serving the Homa Bay County. I want to thank them once more for having elected me as their woman representative for Homa Bay County in the year 2022. We are progressing well with work and six months down the line in office, I've done quite a lot. That is commendable. I don't want to state them because they see them, they feel them on the ground. And those who have not felt me and seen me, they are progressively in the ladder. They are climbing together and we are moving on together. So I am here to represent my people and the people I'm representing are youths, women and PWDs, which I am passionate about to deliver. No compromise about it. Uh, two, two things. I want to start with gender equality first, which is an issue that was a motion that we're debating on right now in Parliament this week, the two-third gender rule. In my statement, I categorically said it is long overdue. We cannot be a country who zigzag with policies and motions. There is no way we talk about always when two-third gender rule comes to the floor of the house, then it falls, it collapses. I am saying as Bensuda, I said and I'm repeating, and I wanted to categorically go on record, this is a thing of the past. All the hurdles and barriers that we pretend around it must come to a closure. We want the two-third gender rule. And when we are talking about the two-third gender rule, we are only not talking about the female gender, the male gender inclusive. That cuts across even the human personnel in private sector, in parastatals and water view. We even need it in the churches and in the community. Even for the chiefs who are being appointed, we want that two-third gender rule, a practical approach. And therefore, as legislators, we are saying we must rally and this time take the shortest time possible to ensure that it passes. No more stories about it. It is for us to ensure that it is implemented. On the gender-based violence, it's just too rampant in the country. I'm saying that there are several gaps which are lacking and we cannot be talking about gender-based violence and things which makes it to be implemented, to be mitigated and not fully in place. Why am I saying that? Do we have effective gender-based centers in our areas which is coupled with guidance and counseling? Do we have adequate human personnel? Do we have mechanism of tracking these people well? Are we saying there are some people sleeping on their jobs? Can they wake up from their slumber and ensure that the culprits who are involved in this are given relevant measure? There are some who need to be rehabilitated. There are some who go into these things because economically they are down. They lack information. Consequences that we get are not acted upon. And therefore I'm calling for all agency. Agencies who are involved in GBV, let us come out strong. I'm calling upon the community not to be compromised by handouts after the culprits have committed offences. Let them be brought to books. I'm saying as a woman representative, and right now, I cannot just explain it in English. I want to put it in the luo. There is a serious case now, which happened in Homa Bay County, where I come from. And precisely my village, I'm not going to tolerate that. Action must be taken. We need adequate dissemination of information to these people, capacity building, awareness creation, name them. We want all agencies involved in this to do it. What is my office doing about all these two things? Number one, I'm doing capacity building. I'm doing advocacy for the two that gender rule. In my office, I've set gender-based violence desk for people to report, for me to partner, to me, for me to work together with the national government, that is the county government, and also the national government, the county commissioner. We want action. I want statistics. I want data. Ben Suda is saying this is part of my program in back to school program. If you give somebody money to go to school and this person socially is not stable, something is wrong with you. If you allocate money and the parent or the guardians are not stable, something is wrong. Peer pressure goes along with sexual reproductive health. That is missing. A lot needs to be done. Enshrined in our curriculum and going the right direction. But you see, I'm sorry to mention what you didn't ask me about the competency-based curriculum. Total confusion, disorder, 
We are not seeing things being implemented the way you need them. Something must be done about it. We don't want to see this confusion that we are seeing on things which clear minds like Ben Suda can be consulted and things run well. I want to say that the government of the day has to be accountable to the Kenyans. How am I using my position? First of all, I want to tell you that I'm a member of the Azimio coalition government. That tells you that I'm on the side of giving checks and balances to the, to the, 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 the current government. That in itself is a participation. That doesn't mean opposition, but that is checks and balances, which as a legislator I'm doing, I'm doing competently and effectively, not only myself, together with the rest of us. We are doing it as Azimio. I want to say that uh, work has begun. We are questioning the implementation of promises and policies. That in itself we are doing. I'm also doing it as on the capacity of a legislature, a county MP. So I think we are on the right track. The question is, when we put on the table the checks and balances, how are they perceived? How are they digested? Those who are supposed to act upon them, what measures are they putting in place? Are they embracing it as part of providing for service delivery? Or we are turning the reverse that it is politics and not service delivery. We want the checks and balances, we want the implementation to be geared towards service delivery. That we are doing, and progressively it will be done until the end of my term. We know very well that even animals, cattle, and even the persons in various cadres, various sections of the country, we have suffered. And these are contributed towards the gas emissions from the industries. So I, I, I want to say that when it comes to industrialization, when it comes to the water industry, we also see the environmental destruction. As an individual, as Ben Suda, I'm championing this through environmental conservation, planting of trees. When we plant trees and we green our country and we do not destroy what is existing, President Moi talked about Katamoja Pandambili. Wangari Madai championed the tree planting. I'm doing the same that will contribute towards ensuring that climatic change is controlled. We have the donors who come into the country. We are talking about climate change, climate change, climate change. Are we only addressing the urban areas and forgetting the rural areas? We want to see these people down on the ground. As a leader, I would want to be remembered with clear socio-economic empowerment of the nation. And when I talk about socio-economic, it is broad. I can dissect it. It has different dimensions.